The sun has nearly set. Lamps are being lit throughout the harbour. Streaming gulls follow the fishing ships as they come in through the large stone harbour wall. At a dock, a, a quiet dock, a dock out of the way of most of the traffic. A captain paces on the quarter deck of his caravel, glancing around towards the sprawling city and barking mindlessly to his crew. Most of the crew were following orders as expected. There's one who's a little slow to pick things up. Smokey, get down into the hold. Make sure those barrels are lashed. If they come loose, we'll be swimming our way to Drakesburg. The captain turns and addresses someone, mindlessly staring off at the gulls. See, si, see. Si. Shake of the head, captain gets back to pacing. It's too many variables. Too many variables. Captain mutters to herself, running her hand through her dark curly hair and sighs heavily. Everything all right, Cap? The first mate appears. A green-scaled, uh, rather lithe dragonborn. I don't like taking on these new folks. You know how it is. And now... Look, Rolovar's just not paying enough. We need to go have a word later. They'll be here soon. They should have been here already. And look out there. And the two of them look out over the harbour wall and towards the ocean beyond. Dark clouds are gathering. Rough crossing, I think. We need these fools to get it quickly. No sooner has the captain said this, and they turn around and see, walking towards them, the most conspicuous attempt at being inconspicuous that they've ever seen. Two dwarfs, an enormous dragonborn, and two mm, human-passing characters walking in slightly ill-fitting clothes, trying to keep to the shadows and half-succeeding as they approach the caravel. Oh, great. They're here. All right, Marker. Go down, greet them, and let them know what, what they need to do. Hello, and welcome to Fables from the Pickled Clipper. This is a lightly edited 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons live play homebrew campaign. More specifically, welcome to Episode 1 of Season 1, Drakesburg Ascendant. The story picks up with a group of adventurers known as the Hand of Aegis as they travel to the recently appeared island city of Drakesburg. For more information on how we got where we are, check out Season 0, Drakesburg Rising, available in full on YouTube right now. Let's return back to the docks in Delzimer and join the Hand of Aegis as they ready for their journey. The Hand of Aegis, which is to say... Esca Cassette, Claire Bardor, and Silverius are headed to the dock to meet up with Captain Adard, who is providing transport to the uh, curious city of Drakesburg. Uh, they're currently in the dock of Delzimer and are making their approach. And as the five of you travel down, you do see a green dragonborn waiting for you. Uh, beside a, uh, a ship that is in the final stages of preparation. And it's the 29th of Morpinoth. Thank you. Yes, I hadn't made that note here. It is indeed the 29th of Morpinoth, right around sunset. And you can see that there is uh, some, some dark clouds brewing over the harbor wall out in the direction you'll be headed. Do we know? I mean, we know the boat we're getting on. I assume. Or do we have to ask around? You were given 
uh, enough information to know where you should be headed. And actually, as you approach, you notice that most of the ships at the moment are coming in. There's not a lot that seem to be prepping to head out. You you know that this is the, the likely ship <clears throat> you're looking for, and you see a, a fairly gruff-looking uh, Dragonborn there waiting. What is the Dragonborn adorned in? Very practical-looking leathers. They're built very differently to, to Silverius. Silverius, I imagine, being very sort of uh, tanky. It's, he's he's Whereas, swole. He's swole. Big, yeah, big beefy he boy. Uh, this other dragonborn, well, firstly, it's unusual to see dragonborn. Um, but yes, green is even less common. But they, they're also built very differently. Uh, sort of, they have wiry muscle. And uh, yeah, they're just sort of standing there next to the, uh, the gangplank. Arms crossed, one foot tapping slightly. Esker eyes this dragonborn warily. And uh, hangs back. And Silvarius' eyes narrow at the sight of the green dragonborn. But he doesn't slow his pace in his uh, approach. Uh, as you get close, he says, oh, uh, Right, hang on. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Look, I'm, I'm the guy with the boat. You're the guy on the dock. I need to know who you are. And we know the name of the captain we're looking for? Uh, yes, Adard. Okay. So Varys' gaze looks away from the green dragonborn. He looks out kind of towards the sea. And he's, we are looking for Captain Adard. Okay. But who are you? His eyes go back to the green dragonborn. And he repeats himself. We are looking for Captain Adard. Alright, look, one of you others speak, because I'm not getting anywhere with this fella. I just need to know your names. You don't talk to the captain, you don't get on the ship, unless I know who you are. It's that simple. Fetch the captain. I said, you don't talk to the captain, and you don't get on the ship, unless I know who you are. Seriously, please, someone else talk. And, um, as he says that, you see, like... Uh, green drool just sort of forming in the corners of his mouth a little bit. And there's the, yeah. there's a very aggressive posture to Silvarius. <laughs> More than his usual social aggression. Uh, Eska will roll her eyes and poke her head out from behind Silvarius and just say <sighs> Eska? I mean... If you have a collective name, I can work with that. But you can go on board, Eska. Claire's eyes are darting back and forth between the two, Dragonborn, and her face is obviously um, looking a little panicked. She kind of reaches out and uh, grabs the edge of the the tunic that Silvarius has bought earlier. And just kind of starts tugging on it a little bit. I'm sorry, sir. Um, my my name's Claire, and and the rest of us we're we're the Hand of Ages, and we're sent by Rolliver, and and this is Silvarius, and I'm sorry for him, but um. No, it's 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 all right. It's all right. And his face just softens when he looks at you. You're not responsible for him. It's okay. I get it. I know how they can be. And of ages. Why didn't you just say so? And he gives like just a a very unfunny smile towards Silvarius. And he says that. Right. Follow me onto the ship. He turns without looking to see if you're actually following and uh, walks on board. Claire's gentle tugging of Silvarius's tunic turns into more of a shove. And her face gets a little red, and she stomps off after the other dragonborn. Savaris so just lets out his normal guttural. <clears throat> Takes big, heavy steps following. Well, that went well. 
I'm sure that was the hardest thing we'll have to do <laughs> getting into Drakesburg. Smooth sailing from here. I'm just kind of hanging back and looking around <clears throat> to see if anything is uh, uh, going on. Basically, if anybody's keeping an eye on us or anything like that. Uh, make a perception check. First vote, hey, it's first not history. Vote. Hey, oh, oh, hello. See, see, <clears throat> I rolled a 28. Ooh. Natural 20. <laughs> My character knows what's going on. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what counts. Yep. <clears throat> so you, you look around the dock behind you. Where well, you've come. Uh, you see plenty of people milling about. You see some, like, Urchins kind of looking like they may be trying to steal some of the uh, food that's just been brought in. Nothing that concerns you personally, so you're fine. You turn back around to look towards the ship, and then some movement catches your eye beyond the ship. If you imagine uh, where Bardora is right now on the dock, it's it's a walk up slightly to the ship and so as you're looking up towards the ship and sort of like looking at that there's um a single mast in the center of the ship as you look beyond that you see the high stone harbor wall that encompasses most of the dock so the dock you're at right now it's kind of on the uh south end of the docks docks which face east you're at like the southern portion uh, and the harbor wall comes out, runs from south to north, uh, and there's a gap sort of at the halfway point for ships to pass through. You know, the idea is that it mostly controls the amount, of, the impact of, of the waves inside the docks. On the north part of the harbor wall, but right at the end, bearing in mind this wall is sort of 20, 30 feet high, you see a large a red paw painted onto the wall probably 10-15 feet tall and uh, you do see some figures standing above where the paw has been painted does it look like they've they're doing anything with it they're a little far away to be sure okay. at this stage um, they just are in the vicinity where it's located you're going to have to, you know, the ship's going to have to get pretty close to it on the way through, uh, mm. through the harbor wall. Does that seem familiar, uh, that symbol? I'm not going to make you roll a history check for this. <laughs> it looks exactly the same as the one that was painted near the south gate in South Delzimer. Um, the one that Claire, I believe, identified as the symbol of Malar. Who is the direct enemy god of her god. So, bad news bears. That was one of his nicknames, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you going to uh, follow up and join the others? Yeah, once... I imagine you're the last one at the stage. Once, uh, yeah, once everything looks okay and we're not being tracked or anything like that. Okay. Martha, the... Uh, Dragonborn kind of like basically holds you kind of midships where the mast is and uh, as you look uh, to one side you can see a uh, halfling standing up uh, at the the wheel on the quarter deck who having seen you arrive heads your way right now don't get lippy with the captain alright let's just Basic fundamentals on the ship. Captain's word is law. Understood? Uh, I'll nod. Understood? At the second time, that's very much pointed at Silvarius. Silvarius is not looking towards the green dragonborn. He just closes his eyes a little bit. When he opens them back up, he looks over to him out of the side of his eye and he just gives this real small nod. Alright, Captain. Here they are. 
and uh, <clears throat> you see you see the uh, rather uh, stout halfling uh, climb down the stairs and uh, head over to you guys. Uh, she has uh, very dark uh, tan skin and as mentioned earlier, dark curly hair. Just kind of stopped short. Just, what a mess you lot are. Holy hells. You stand there like a mile. Especially this fella. And again points at Silvarius. I mean, you're not all dressed up in your armor, so I suppose that's something. I mean, you understand that you have a reputation around here now, right? Groups like this don't tend to travel around. I'm just saying, if you're trying not to attract attention to yourselves, do better. All right. So, um, listen, it's, uh, we're going to head off in about, I don't know, five minutes. Just making sure the last things are secure. And we'll untie and head out. Basic rule of thumb. Keep your head down. Don't get in the way. We run a very light crew. We don't need many people. You're welcome to go sit in the hold if you want. We're going to be landing in Dark Orchards. That's north of the city. From there, you can just head down, follow the river. And go in through the north gate. Usually, they don't ask too many questions. If they decide to be curious, flip them a bit of coin, you'll be fine. You can get into Drakesburg, no problem. Any questions? How long will the journey take? Depends on the weather. Looks like it might turn a bit foul. If it does, it's going to take longer. Expecting it to be rough, three, four hours, maybe. Could be longer. Probably get through the first half without it getting too bad, just looking at it. But it looks it looks pretty rough over by the island, all right? Uh, Eska's going to plunk herself down, and she's going to go ahead and cast Druidcraft. Check on the weather. Or at least what it what it will tell me. Okay. Um, How does it look when she casts Druidcraft? Is it like fairly obvious? Yeah, you just uh, you see uh, whatever the weather is. There's like a little almost. You imagine like a, a like a TV screen of of showing the weather in front of her. So if it was snow, you'd almost have like just a little a little flutter of snow, but just in like a, a sort of foot foot wide area, just sort of a couple of feet in front of her. Just like a small, almost like diorama. Yeah, yeah. Not like a heads-up display <laughs> in front of her. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, just like a little, a little diorama. But sometimes, that sometimes you can almost feel a little bit of. So if it was snowing, you'd you it would set like a few flakes would settle. If it was sunny, it would be slightly warm as well. So there is some uh, physical sensation to it too. Okay. See, so as you do that, firstly the captain kind of looks at you, but not too. Not too severely, just kind of observing. Uh, very quickly, as you sort of watch, you know, it kind of just starts out clear and then gets very wet. And some, some drops of rain sort of filter through. Seeing that, I just kind of huff and take up the captain's offer and head for the hold. Just go and go inside. Okay. Um, yeah, because we're all in our, <clears throat> not our armor, right? Well, right. Well, I'm in my armor. armor. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that's true. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Bador, but anybody uh, who had to buy <laughs> other stuff. Yeah, us clinky, clinky <clears throat> fellas yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> Just so y'all know, I'm not fully kitted out like in my in my normal like hiking gear. So anything that is like too cumbersome, I didn't bring. Like I didn't bring my like mason's tools and like my dungeoneering stuff. Uh, so I have stuff that's marked off, so I don't look quite as like packed out. But I'm still bringing my bow and arrow. I don't care. So, <laughs> yeah, because that'll uh, we're not wearing particularly waterproof clothing, so she'll yeah. head that way too. Claire will stay above until it starts raining. Okay, uh, as you two head down, Bardor, I imagine you're leading that, uh, you do bump into someone else. Uh, Angie, you have just finished securing the last of the barrels down underneath. Go ahead and uh, describe your character. As you bump into Bardor. And then I'll have you make a check in a second. Okay. So you are seeing a... Uh, probably six and a half foot tall... 
cat that looks like a Bengal cat. Uh, so kind of uh, golden brown with black spots. And he is wearing a cut-off vest uh, with a pants that have a spot cut out in the back, so his tail, his very long tail, can swish. He's pretty slender, but has muscle enough as if he's used to the kind of work that comes with being on a ship. And uh, as he sees you guys coming through, uh, he looks very excited, and he'll greet you guys. Uh, hola, hola. Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? Who are you? Why are you here? Uh, just, uh, apparently rain's coming, just trying to stay dry. Where have and you come I from? Just, yeah, I uh, just kind of just try to move around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Doesn't want to talk. He meant to say hello. And we're, we're the, <laughs> the passengers. Uh, I'm assuming you're part of the crew? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Uh, well, uh, luckily we won't be, be with you long enough uh, for you to have to get used to him. So don't worry about it. Oh, oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. The captain mentioned that it would be a, a bumpy ride. I, I don't really have much experience on boats. Uh, what, uh, what, what would that entail? Oh, you know, just the usual uh, swaying back and forth, and uh, uh, <laughs> I was worried about that. Occasionally, some water might get in, but it's okay. We take care of everything. Okay. Um, well, I'm Cassette. It's it's nice to meet you. Um, and he'll eagerly sure that... like come forward and 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 grab do, do the the two hand the, you know two hands it, it, over uh, one hand handshake and eagerly shake your hand yeah the <laughs> one that you never plan but it always just <laughs> happens in this well uh yeah uh yeah n nice to meet you and and what was your name uh, i am i am smoky uh, like uh like a fire like c c yes okay all right. Well, it's nice to meet you. Uh, do you have a place where maybe we can um, get com as comfortable as we can? Oh, sure. I show you where you can go, and I, I'll lead the way wherever that's supposed to be. <laughs> she just kind of turns uh, back to the group and kind of does like a shoulder shrug, like. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, I imagine this sort of happened like right where you kind of head down, so. There's just like this weird awkward meeting, sort of like in the in the the doorway. Essentially, the bar door's already gone. Not that he knows where he's going. Um, but yes, you can you can uh, lead Cosette down, and essentially, um, low deck there's the main hold area where you were lashing all the barrels, and then there are a few um, hammocks that are set up between some of the the struts. Uh, there, there's not a lot down there, really. This is a, a ship designed for relatively short journeys at the bow. There is a, <laughs> we can't call it a kitchen, but there's a small, like, food prep type area. Uh, some of the barrels, uh, Smokey, you would know, contain food and supplies uh, in case you do need to go on a longer journey. But right now, mostly what's been going on is just little shuttles back and forth that shouldn't take more than a day. So if things get a little bit bumpy, I would not suggest be in the hammocks. Oh, okay. Good call. Yeah. Makes sense. But well, here you go. You can stay here. Great. Thank you. And here is a wooden floor next to a wooden wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Now, I'm already can, I have, can I have Smokey uh, please roll a slide of hand check? Oh, oh. boy. <laughs> oh, no. The mystery sleight of hand check for no reason. It's just like okay. Um, funnily enough, they both went only to me. Yeah, which I I'm see perfectly that. fine with. Oh dear. <laughs> so uh, who's going below deck? Who's staying above? So Vara is staying Claire's, above. Yeah, Claire's above until the rain starts. Smokey would then go wherever he's supposed to be. 
uh, helping, like, untie stuff and push off, so you'd be up above. Eska will make her way to the front of the boat, basically kind of in the Titanic position. Yep. Is where she plans to be. Cool. Uh, okay. So badly want to um, say Zavaria scoots up behind her. <laughs> you can insert that, yeah, that broken the bad flute play. <laughs> it, it's still, it's still just a little early for that, though. We're, we're getting there. Don't, don't, don't force maybe, it. Maybe it's the trip fun. back. Maybe. Right. It's funny that you think there's going to be a trip back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if everyone's ready, Captain will give the orders to cast off. When you said um, wooden floor in a wooden in a corner. Uh, so there was no refreshments. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could probably find some like dried fish. You mm. have to wait till we've got going before they come around with the refreshments cart. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> if you walk Just... over towards me, I'll like pull out a piece of beef jerky and offer it to you. All right, exciting. That's better than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know Claire's probably got some kind of stale bun or a piece of floor cheese in her pocket. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so. Ever-reliable floor cheese. Yeah. So, those above deck will see... Uh, it doesn't take very long to push out and then head towards the, the opening in the harbor wall. Uh, and as you do head out, you see very clearly the large ore print on the wall and I mean it's you know it's been painted quickly without particularly much care so there's like lots of dripping lines that come down which just kind of helps with the effect to be honest does anybody seem uh, like they're close by and looking proud uh, let me have you make a perception check also uh, there are people who are close by I thought you were asking, because you know, Silvarius is like right, right behind you. <laughs> Looking That's very true. proud. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, that is a 23. Wow. So, as you, uh, you look at it, and then look up on the wall, you see staring down at you, and I mean staring down at you, especially since you're right at the front of the ship, uh, you see in full plate mail but very dark plate mail. A creature you've probably not ever encountered before. They have a dark purple skin, slightly weirdly shaped ears, and what could potentially be gills under the ears. It's hard to tell because they're quite high above you. But you have pretty keen eyesight. So you, you think there's some gills there. As, as the, the ship keeps moving on, they stop looking at you and turn their attention to the rest of your party further back. And they just watch. We're not close to them, right? Particularly. No, I mean, so the 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 harbor the like the, the gap in the harbor wall has to be wide enough for some pretty big ships. And you would have been on the south side anyway, so you're probably closer to that southern portion of the wall so i mean you know with a, a longbow you could shoot them probably but i mean it's not like they could just jump down on the ship or anything i i guess i just uh keep an eye on them until i can't keep an eye on them okay uh as you're sort of passing like the front of the ship is going past the wall you do see a moon elf walk up alongside and just whisper something in the ear of this unknown creature and he just nods once Eska resists the urge to jump off the ship and swim back just about the rest of you would have seen probably the uh, the paw print Blair honestly probably would have been hyper focused on just the symbol um mm -hmm. just kind of staring 
blankly at it and you can see her kind of like clutching her chest a little bit like gripping something underneath her dress everyone that would have been with her would know that she wears um one of her holy symbols on a chain so she'd be gripping it from underneath her dress and you just see her her lips moving just barely under her breath just whispering uh, a prayer while she's staring at the symbol and remind me uh did claire explain any of this to us prior yeah okay so we're aware of yeah i think the entity if i remember right she explained who malar was kind of what he like a general idea i think of what he represented mm -hmm. and that he was kind of a direct opposite to like the <clears throat> the house of um goddesses and stuff that she worshiped okay her gods are kind of like chaotically good fey energy. So <clears throat> Malar would kind of be the opposite of that. Loki, you would definitely clock the guy um, standing up on the wall. I also am pretty confident you would know exactly what it is. Uh, you would know that that is a triton. Mm. without any question it is surprising though because you are not accustomed to seeing tritons in somewhere built up like this you wouldn't normally expect to see tritons in the trappings of regular city folk and this guy's in like big plate mail and standing very like confidently on top of the wall and it just it it all feels wrong he'll just kind of mutter that cannot be good but eventually the ship leaves the harbor and out to the open waters in front of you you can see on the horizon your destination the island city of drakesburg the high walls rung around it, and you can see uh, to the north on the edge of the island just the hint of light, probably uh, some larger fires that are burning in some small settlements. Uh, it does take a while to travel. This is not a very quick ship, and the wind is not necessarily very kind, but you are at least within already within visible distance of the island. And for now, it hasn't started raining. So oh, there's lovely. <laughs> so, for the first hour or so, let's say, does anyone do anything? Uh, want to talk to anybody? Am I by myself? Just with my dad. Oh, well. So essentially you are by man. yourself. Can't. Our riveting conversations through the you course look of around. our adventures. You can't even see Bardor. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I don't even, that's probably true. <clears throat> there's, there's lanterns down okay, there. Yeah, okay. you, you just see some beef jerky floating towards you. <laughs> 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 Why, yes, please. We essentially just have an unseen servant without <laughs> actually having one. Yeah, who doesn't actually serve. No. You have an unseen. An unseen, yeah. yeah. An unseen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, question. Hmm. Uh, so various. Hmm. Um, Kedox. What's the status with Kedox? Do you remember? So Kedox is probably... Um, is the top of the ship fairly visible from mostly or you said there's a center mass coming out like uh the middle of it right yes kedox is probably up on that and just monitoring the top side of the ship and um keeping an eye on anything that kind of changes so like the captain's probably being the captain if the green dragonborn comes up kedox is keeping a close eye on the green dragonborn um okay 
smoky and, uh, and uh, yeah, just if it's uh, anybody that's not the Hand of Ages. Gotcha. Um, for the most part, um, once the ship is clear of the harbor, um, the crew have it pretty easy. There's not a lot of work that they can do. Um, the captain is at the helm. Um, first mate, Marka, is there too. Um, there are a couple of other crew that you see building about in addition to uh, Smokey. Make a uh, make a perception check for Keto. Okie dokie. 16. So, what Keto does see, um, after about uh, an hour, hour and a half, uh, say an hour and a half, on the uh, port side, yeah, I remember some things. Oh, for our viewers, <laughs> not your players, what side is the port side? Uh, that's the left. Aha, see? I knew that. <clears throat> The only reason I've remembered it is because they both have four letters. I needed that that's clue. That's the key. Yeah, that's how I remember it too. So on the, the port side, um, about an hour and a half into the trip, Keox alerts you to weird activity on on, on, on the port side. If Keox alerts me of that, no, Keox is actually going to fly down there. Very good. As Keox flies down there, uh, what Keox sees is um, there's disruptance in the water. Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. <laughs> that was disturbance and disruption merged. Yeah, it was a couple um, words. It was pieces of words. <laughs> <laughs> There's disruptance in the water. But it turns out to be a large pod of dolphins. You would guess 20 or so that are just swimming alongside, breaking uh, the water alongside. As The light has mostly gone at this point, but not completely. And he just takes note of that. Are you sending him back up? Yeah, uh, Kedox will fly back up, and um, so virus, he'll, he'll, his eyes will return to his own, and he he is going to because it's starting to get a little more stormy. Uh, yes. Uh, well, you can see it up ahead. Up ahead. Uh, it still hasn't really um, had any impact here yet. And it, does it look nasty ahead of us? Oh goodness, yes. Okay, so virus, he he will make his way up to the captain. And he, he walks up and he's... And you're sure that this vessel can handle that? Oh yeah, no doubt. No doubt. We've been doing this sort of stuff for years. That's, that's, uh, that's nothing. How does... Probably. <laughs> probably. How does Savarius feel about this response? Uh, make an insight check. <laughs> Uh, 12. It is not always easy to read people from such different walks of life. Uh, as such, you're not really, uh... You're not really sure quite how, uh, how much of that was just banter and how much of that was legitimate concern. <laughs> He's feeling enough confidence from the captain's response, um... On the inside, he's. This is a different experience for him. Uh, heading into a such a storm, but as you, uh, I mean, you you have quite a nice view now because you 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 will have had to have climbed up the uh, the steps to get up to that that quarter deck where the helm is. Mm -hmm. um, so you can now see nicely across the the full length of the ship, um, and off to the left, uh, you can see occasionally one of the dolphins that they're, they're a little closer to the ship mostly but there are a couple who are sort of still in your line of sight if you look over that way as you do look over that way uh you see some more disturbance <laughs> as as does Kedox. all of a sudden one of the dolphins gets projected five feet into the air by a large, well, there's a head and a neck that reaches out and grabs it, chomps very hard, and then drags it down under the water. Does Esca notice this at all? I just want, I'm, and I'm, I'm mostly kind of just 
grazing out in front. I just wondered if I'd noticed the noise. Uh, let's make a perception check. I, will, I won't say with disadvantage. Uh, I don't think the wind is bad enough yet. And still no rain. Or little rain. Uh, it's going to be a 10. Um, I don't think you would have heard that. Okay. Uh, uh, Smokey, can I also have a perception check from you? I think you're probably still milling around up top. Um, at the moment, uh, I have a cassette and bar door below deck. There are a couple of crew down there with you as well. Who are just chilling. 24. Uh, so you definitely would have heard that noise. Did I did I see anything or just heard it and then it was gone by the time I looked? Uh, roll me a percentile dice. Okay. Um, I will say you are closer to that side and therefore would have had a chance to get a glimpse. Yes. At what, so what I saw is that something that is normal? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a big head. I mean, it just took a dolphin and basically one gulp. Okay. So his eyes would just go bug-eyed and he would just look to see or look around to see if anybody else saw what he saw. Uh, you would see Silveria staring over there. Silvaris is actually, he's got his hand pointed out and he's uttering to the captain and what about that? Uh, Smokey would quickly make his way close to them. Okay. Uh, in, in wonderment. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and <laughs> we'll, we'll make this a little bit more straightforward. Let's just plop you all on over here boat map so you you can see what's going on so <clears throat> uh currently i'm afraid um bador and cosette you are not visible because you are below deck along with a couple of crew uh so Varys, you're up on the quarter deck with the captain and first mate uh smoky you are on the port side esco you're up in the bow claire you're just kind of milling around in the middle there um i would say Right now, you're the only one who hadn't declared a position, so you may declare a position. Yeah, um, Claire, kind of like when she saw the, um, symbol, the first symbol, that little bit of, like, just sparkle that she normally has is just gone. She would have just been, um, she probably would have posted up somewhere along the uh, the railing of the boat, just kind of leaning on it and looking out over the waves and just generally looking just depressed. Gotcha. Okay. So that's where everyone is at this moment in time. Uh, the captain says, uh, what about what? His eyes kind of like white over real quick and Kedox starts flying down towards the uh, the access to the underneath. Uh, he, he tells him in his mind to go tell the others below deck. And uh, he says to the captain, A very large head just ate a dolphin. That's not good. Don't say. All right. Uh, I guess brace for impact or something. And um, you see uh, Marka um, moves towards the very uh, back of the boat stern. Uh, there is a bell there. Uh, and just as they get to it, um, ready to ding a ling ling. Uh, you see once more a head come out and grab a dolphin and then a second head come out it misses a dolphin then it looks at the ship and you see malice in its eyes um, I'm going to need uh, everybody please to roll 
initiative. Oh my god. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I even, reject this encounter. Even us who are un in the below. Uh, yes, you please uh, roll initiative. So, Varia, six. 21. I, I've got 18. 13. Six. 23. Nice. Oh, nice. it is Marco. Okay. Are any of the other people on the ship happen to be called, like, Olo? Olo. Or... <laughs> you can only find them if you call out for Marco. <laughs> yeah. You guys. You guys are the worst. I like to think that Polo walks, works the other end of the ship and they have to talk to each other a lot. <laughs> um, can you give me one for Kedox, please? Yes, I can. First time in Drakesburg. I suppose I can give you a little lay of the land. Uh, if you value your coin purse and life, I would suggest staying inside the city walls. The Drakes Wardens and their weave worms have no jurisdiction beyond the gates. The worms are those giant lizards with the big fin on their backs. Do not aggravate them. If it's shopping you're after, then Drakesburg has it all. The finest crafters and artisans from across Faerun have set up shop in the city. If you have a discerning eye, then stick to the South Walk or the District of the Elements. Ah, I see by your face that you are looking for less bespoke and unique items. In that case, there are plenty of vendors in the streets surrounding Dregsport and even some near the Light Docks. If you're more interested in the sights, then obviously you should take in the Wormspire. It's the towering castle at the centre of the city, home of the potentate and his advisors known as the Caucus. The other major attraction is the eerily floating palatial mansion, the Cloud Lodge. It drifts over the large park in the District of the Elements. I have sadly not yet had the pleasure of visiting it myself, but I'm sure the invitation will arrive any day now. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's becoming clear to both of us that you are not my usual standard of clientele, so I suggest you leave my store and head for the dogs where you will feel more at home. Good day. Well, we must kill this thing quickly. Yeah. <laughs> or die quickly. Or, <clears throat> or we <laughs> just... Short session one. Or we just sail away and let it go. Uh, just a scop it. We'll call that okay. a D, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> di diplomacy. Please stop, <laughs> gigantic <Quick>. creature. <laughs> just eat the dolphins. <laughs> <clears throat> Easy food. <laughs> it's a buffet. Look at them all. So Have your derbs. Here we go. Uh, Smokey, you are up first. Uh, off to the port, you see, in amongst the dolphins, two heads sticking out of the water, one with a mouthful of dolphin, the other one just staring at the ship, looking aggressive. It looks like uh, they're starting to slowly move towards the ship. They are um, large uh, reptilian heads with uh, some spikes on them and big fangs and stuff. And they, they are of a uh, creature that is... Uh, green in nature. Smokey, you're up first. How about it? Okay. I think I'm going to uh, whip out one of my darts. I will move towards five feet towards the heads and uh, and then uh, shoot them with my dart. Are you going at uh, left or right as you look at them? Uh, I'll just shoot for the the one to the right. Okie doke. Okay. And, and that's it. I guess that's 21 to hit. Yep. That uh, definitely hits. Nice. Okay, seven piercing damage. Okay. Um, yeah. You uh, you let loose your dart. It uh, lodges into the, the thick uh, scaly skin. 
And, uh, well, that's a dart you probably will never see again. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, and then <clears throat> I will... Okay, is there anything close by that I can, like, duck behind? Uh, I mean, the the, the, rail, the railing of the ship, certainly. Yeah. I would take my shots and then duck down. Okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. Done. Eska. Uh, Eska's gonna... I, I get that you said they rang the bell, right? Marka has not yet rung the bell. Marka is like fingertips away from ringing the bell. Did I have I heard commotion enough to act? The surprise Eska rang. I, th I think, I think <laughs> at this point you would have heard some commotion because it's come out twice now. Okay. So yes. Uh, on on hearing this, Eska will uh, turn around see whatever that is uh and duck kind of slide in underneath the rail of the ship and she's actually going to slide prone uh -huh. and uh she is just going to gesture towards below deck and a uh, message to a set and say cassette get up here danger and that's that's my turn. Okay. Uh, it's now Marcus turn. Marcus rings the bell. <laughs> All kinds of ding a ling a ling a ling a ling is going on. Bador, Cosette, you hear the bell ring. Okay. In fairness, nobody told you what the bell ringing means, mm -hmm. but you hear the bell ringing. Cosette, you also and just I got heard the message. Yeah. <clears throat> you got the message. Yes. Marcus then immediately turns. As Captain Adard steps away from the helm and Marka takes over. And uh, Captain Adard grabs a, a scimitar from next to the helm and a dagger. And uh, moves towards the edge. Just looks down to everyone. And uh, says, Alright, defend the ship and we'll get you there safe. I will say Bardor and Cassette below deck you see uh there are two the the two other crew that are there have zero interest in going up right now do they look scared or lazy i'll give you a free insight check free meaning i don't have to roll <laughs> not that's not what he meant <laughs> uh 15 that's not what i meant mister uh you think they look very scared they look able-bodied, though, right? I mean, they're part of the crew, so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not... They're not useless. Just... You know, uh, choosing to uh, stay there. Okay. Uh, Bador? Hmm. Am I up? You are currently below deck. Okay. Ke uh, did Kedox come down, too? I th thought I remember hearing uh, Silveri say something about sending Kedox down to, like, warn us. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, he would have had time to get down and appear and, and freak out, maybe just a like bit. yes, screeching like uh, like something is wrong type of a. They haven't yeah. discussed so this before, gonna... but it's definitely like. <laughs> so the combination of Kedox screeching, a, a bell going off like crazy, and yep. the crew down below looking scared. I guess I could put together that something's going on. Yes. Okay. Group insight check. Make it, yeah. History check. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's do this. All right. So I'm going to. So this is the first. Well, where 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 are we located on this sh on this ship? So you can get to sort of like the the exit with a a regular move. With it. From below deck. Okay. Um, you can just about make out the heads. Uh, I would imagine you do a quick scan as you come up. And you would see lots of people pointing over to the port side. So would I be able to... And you can you can see the two heads. I could see them from there. Yep. Okay. So 
Uh, with my like in the first uh, turn, uh, because of the dread ambusher, I get an extra ten feet of movement. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll go up to the edge of the of the ship. Uh, do I have any height issues with that? Uh, no, I mean it's not like it's a solid. Okay. Um, a fully solid edge anyway. There, there's there's viewpoints if you needed one, but I mean it's not too. too you're you're fine. Okay. You can find you can find a advantage points. Sounds no issue. great. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to cast. Uh, I think I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark. Um, all right, I'm gonna roll to attack. Uh, mm -hmm. With my longbow. I don't think that hits. It's I rolled a twelve. You did. Uh, the first shot goes wide, harmlessly into the water. Raspberries. Is what is obviously what what he says. Um, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's try again. Tw twenty eight. Uh, twenty eight. All kinds of hits. All right. So it's uh, nine piercing from the bow, and then six additional from Hunter's Mark. Yep. Okay. And then again. Uh, 22. Oh, yeah. And that's eight Big. eight piercing and four from Hunter's Mark. Okay. And is that that third one, that's the Dread Ambusher attack? Yes. So that gets the extra damage too, right? Yeah, actually it would. It would get an extra D8. I forgot to tag that. Five. Hmm. So the first shot goes wide. And you say raspberries in your frustration. And then you just quickly fire off two more shots. Come in. Right underneath the chin. Of, uh, which one were you going for? Left or right, sorry? The closest one to you? The closest one, yeah. Yeah. Goes right under. <clears throat> and you just see the force of the arrows literally takes the head clean off. Sweet. Uh, anything else on your turn? I sort of giggle and go, <laughs> and then like sneak back down and like just to kind of get a little bit of cover. Gotcha. Uh, Kedox is up next. Kedox is currently uh, flapping around underneath. What would you like Kedox to do? If the alert has been successful, he would fly back up and maintain just uh, an aerial um, circling kind of of the uh, uh we keep it kind of close to the boat actually um scanning the water uh clear oh boy so yeah i guess hearing the um bell go off because she was oblivious to everything beforehand she'll turn around kind of confused at first until she sees two giant heads and then darts and arrows and everything else suddenly being hurled across the boat at it and um in in true fashion she's gonna squeak and a firebolt's gonna come out of her hand uh is that a nine to hit i get I yeah i guess that's the way it rolled it yeah so true fashion yeah. it uh <clears throat> yeah <laughs> there's a as it hits the water Uh, so virus. Not going to miss out on any of this. He takes a couple of steps forward to the side, extends one hand up, and starts to do some gestures, uh, uttering a uh, incantation in draconic, and summons forth a ray of frost. Nineteen to hit, or. Six cold damage. The white just sort of briefly spread out across the, the neck of the... Well, the neck that's attached to the remaining head. It sort of reels and, and cries out. Uh, Cosette? Excellent. Uh, you... I, I don't... I, I missed it. Did the, the two crew members do anything? When Bardar... Uh, no, they're, they're, they're cowering pitifully. Um, can I yell at them to come with me? Um, make a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, or intimidation. 
Mm. Your choice. Yeah, she's wearing a dress. Um, yeah, intimidation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get up, you lazy fools. But she says it kind of like that. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that was a five. They don't appear to be moving right now, but we'll see what happens on their turn. Okay, uh, she'll save her attack for an enemy instead of kicking them. Um, okay, she'll <laughs> run, I guess, run up to on deck. Okay, uh, you get that far with your move. Okay, can she... You are, you are on the below portion, not the top portion. Like, you're on the, the main deck. Okay, um, can she see if the see what it is now? Uh, oh, yeah. Big green head. Still there? Even after so oh, yeah. to say, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just a little um, bit colder. Yeah, maybe ten yeah. feet slower. A little nippy. Let's see. I'm gonna cast bless on. I'll do Bardor esque. Oh wait, hang on. Range is thirty feet. I can't do Eska. Uh, I'll do Bardor Silverius, even though I didn't see that horrible attack. Uh, oh, I guess it did six cold damage. Um, sorry, Claire was the one who missed. Yeah, I'll do Claire. <laughs> Bardor. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I wasn't up here at the time. Uh, and it is it is in character for her to always <laughs> miss that first firebolt. Mm. Uh, I'll do, when they start hitting, it's <laughs> relentless. I'll do so various Bardor and Claire. Um, on good. my way up, did oh. I pass any barrels or uh, do I see anything like maybe a box crate lid or something like that on deck I know I did a, you're looking, I know I already did a, a skill check this round so if I if you're looking for shield light yeah like even just a wooden something I would say yes you would have definitely passed uh, like a, a barrel lid Some that you could have just passed. grabbed on your way past yeah okay all right she would have done that so you, we can say you have an improvised shield and uh yeah you see the green head slowly move very slowly move towards until eventually it reaches and then you see it for what it really is as it clambers out of the water and climbs up onto the edge of the boat uh, now, currently with one head, you see, um, there, there's still kind of two necks, but there's only one head. And you see this large, uh, lizard-like creature, four legs, a very powerful tail that it clearly uses to propel itself underwater. And Smokey, it looks down at you angrily. And it chomps. Does a ten hit you, Smokey? A 10's not going to hit. I think it's 13, my armor class. So yeah. Uh, it does not hit you. It, it snaps and just uh, bites into the wood. And then it just looks around angrily. And as it does, the strangest thing happens. Its neck, where the head had been, withers. But two grow in its place. Mm. Yeah. Claire. Yeah. Behind you, you hear water churning. And you see, climbing up on the other side, something remarkably similar to what's happening on the far side. Two heads turn and snap at you as a hmm, not so much green this time more a uh, sort of purplish red large lizard with two necks climbs up and takes two bites at you one with each of its heads uh, that is a 22 to hit and a 26 to hit Um, and that is a total of 22 piercing. Bardor, you would note that your Hunter's Mark did not fall. Hmm. I see. 
Smokey, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I would like... I will stand up from my crouched position. Yep. Uh, I will cast Thunder Wave. I'm going to say aim carefully. Yeah. Because uh, that may damage the boat a little bit. Okay. I think you would, you would be smart enough to know that you don't necessarily want to blow the ship up. Yeah. Okay, and then that's what a saving throw from me, right? It is a constitution saving throw. Alrighty. Uh, ooh, that's an 18. My spell saves 14, so... On a, um... So, on a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. Okay. Alright, so it takes... Total. Takes half. Um, so it would get four. You force this burst of thunder out of you, and uh, it it rocks for a second, but maintains its grip. You know what? Let me confirm that. Does it maintain its grip? Yes, it does. It maintains its grip on the uh, the boat. Uh, right now, both of them sort of have their front uh, their front set of feet uh, up right on the um, the the railing. Are they in melee? They're in melee range of me, right? So if I tried to back up, they'd get an attack of opportunity. Uh, you would surmise that, yes. Okay. Uh, and in fact, looking at it this close, you think that um, they have quite long necks and probably reach more than you can. Okay. Um, I will just stay where I'm at. Okay. Uh, Eska, things have changed since you sent your message. Yeah, they have. <laughs> if it helps, Claire looks really bad. That does actually help. <laughs> uh, okay, so Eska, seeing, uh, seeing Claire getting chomped, uh, so Eska will uh, begin to stand up. She will grasp the uh, blue stone at her neck and she will twin cast levitate uh hang on what's the right yeah you're in range and she will um raise claire up into the air and she will raise herself up into the air um okay 20 feet up you don't take opportunity checks if you're uh, forced to move, right? Uh, correct. Claire, you see Eska doing something, and you feel lightness start to take over. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see Eska kind of her hand reaches out, and she will <clears throat> she will kind of gradually lift her hand and attempt to lift you. So, would you like to let that happen? If. Yeah, if she sees it, if she sees Eska doing it, then yeah, she would she would connect the dots. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, you are both 20 feet in the air. I will say, as you start to lift, you do see the boat start to wondering. slip <laughs> underneath. Now, the boat wasn't going very fast because... Uh, it just hasn't been making very quick time. Eska, you also see that the mast is coming towards you. Okay, that's cool. Um, Claire, you see that you will be... Uh, you're currently about 20 feet above the main deck. You'll be about 10 feet above the uh, quarter deck at the back. That is information that you now have. Okay. Uh, I'll... I'll also say that, that being the case, let me know um, when or if Claire might float off the back of the boat. I'll try to figure out when to make, how everything's going to move so that it all makes sense. Yeah. And I'll keep you posted. I, I guess, I guess uh, if it helps, I will drop the spell if it looks like Claire's going to be gone for, for good. 
Okay, but that I makes will, sense. I will try and wait till the last possible moment so she floats up to the back of the boat. <clears throat> yeah. Understood. Claire, you can kind of spin around and, and confirm that it's her. You can't do a lot else, but you can kind of spin around. I'm assuming a trail of blood follows her down the deck as she's floating backward. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, it probably does. <laughs> and, I mean, you can see the, the, the creature underneath you. It's like snapping, trying to get to you, but it can't quite reach. You are just outside of its range. Um, incidentally, how high up would Kedox have been? Because I know you said he was flying around. Um, oh, 20 feet, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I do imagine not too very high. Um, mm, a good vantage height. So I, I do yeah. think above, I mean, possibly yeah, no, like I mean 30, that, but maybe in that range, 20, 30. That's fine. So, uh, seeing everything that's going on, um, the captain and the first mate share a look. And the first mate abandons the helm, runs to the back, underneath the bell grabs a large, uh, what's it called? Like a bill hook type thing? That's a thing, right? Oh, yep. Is that the thing I want? You know, a, a long stick with a hook on it. And then walks out towards the very edge of the, at the, the back there. And then the captain quickly hurries over and takes the helm. The cassette, you hear the sound of no feet approaching from behind you. Mm -hmm. You suspect that your intimidation did not work. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, Bador, your turn. Yar. Do I know what this, these creatures are? To know how to combat them. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for a history check. How dare you? Or nature. <gasps> I grant you a nature. Nature. You it's see. probably just as bad. Uh, it's 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 better. Uh, oh okay. So I'll go with that since you were so kind. Because it's not outside the realm's possibility that you know what these are, but it's a high DC. Sixteen. Unfortunately, that's not going to tell you. Okay. Um. Uh. I mean, you could you could speculate, but you don't know. Right. Okay. Well, then I'm just going to continue to do what I do. Uh. And I'm going to shoot at it with my uh with my uh, bow and arrow. That is what you do. Yes. I guess I'll just go for the on that one that's uh attacking the uh, uh t attacking Smokey. Ooh. Uh, natural 20, so it's a 29. Um, uh, the 29 hits. Uh, you, you have noticed now that, uh, while they do have scales, it's not the thickest of scales, mm -hmm. so it's not that hard to get through. 29 will do it. Let's see, that's, uh, the, 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 that's, uh, the 20, and then, uh, what is that? Is that 29 damage? Yep. Okay. 29 damage. Well, you got uh, an ally in combat with it, right? Did you already add that? Oh, there is. A, it is now sneak attack damage that you Ooh. can oh, double. Thank you. I had forgotten about Very that. Very good. Uh, I had not rolled that. Uh, I no. will <laughs> roll that. Sparta is scary. So five. Uh -huh. And then two. So okay. that would be what? 29 plus... Uh, 36. There you go. That would be 36 with one shot. Good gravy. Uh, remember how you said the head hadn't exploded? Yes. <laughs> yes, it has. You've gone right up into the brain. And it does just... There's no way to sugarcoat that. The, the, the head explodes and... The neck withers. Oh, I didn't use my bless. Oh, bless it. Oh, no. <laughs> let me... Do, let, uh, just for the sake. So I hit with 31, uh, sorry. That's quite all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so you can see, like, the two heads that grew look pretty fresh. Like, the, the, the body. Even though it hasn't really taken much of the damage, 
is looking like it's it's um struggling for to breathe it, it's it's taken an immense amount of damage in a very short space of time mm -hmm. and it is in a bad way okay uh, i'll just do that again hopefully sure. hopefully as effective so it's a 12. This time. yeah in your excitement you uh you shoot wide a, a rare barter miss again i can't believe two two misses i know in in one combat is almost unprecedented all right uh Kedox. So I was curious. Yes. Uh, Kedox is flying around, and I know it's kind of out of order because um, I don't think Kedox would just naturally do this on his own. But I wanted to try to use Kedox if um, Savarius noticed, like you know, the two elevated people are floating now. If he could kind of corral Claire to remain over the boat, uh, I have to wait until the next turn for that. Uh, make an intelligence check for Kedok. Okay. That is a 12. You know what? Yeah. I'll say you can um, you can have him go up there and try and uh, have him push. Give me a uh, strength check. <laughs> Boy. Really good at these, y'all. Oof. <laughs> I had to read that too. So he tries real hard. <laughs> Zero. Hedox is now giving Claire a little hug. Oh. Um, as she, it'll he, be okay. As she drifts <laughs> off the back of the boat. <laughs> You're with you till the end. He's giving it some flaps, but she's not really moving laterally yet. To, um, to be fair, is Eska moving to at like the same speed oh yeah okay because we do have to stay the, within 60 feet of each other yeah and the, the well the, i mean that will change when eska face plants into the mast yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which is coming soon Never uh Claire, do, it do is you actually think she's your just turn. gonna float the whole way and just go <laughs> go straight into it with that it's uh <coughs> just gonna embrace it Gonna do the full kind of uh, an army the side and a leg either side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very Looney Tunes. Yeah. Idea. It depends on how much like rock the boat has if it gets a good wind up. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Claire, you are you are floating very safely for now above uh, the purpley guy. Okay. First action or bonus action. Um, she's gonna cast spiritual weapon. Um, oh yes. And her little buddy's gonna pop up right here. Nice. Right by his head. So yeah. Unicorn hammer appears, glitter, sparkles, all that fun stuff. And a twenty four to hit. Oh yeah. Um for nine force damage. It uh, it takes the damage. On right. The first right on the chin literally and um feeling very um personally attacked earlier <laughs> she, she's gonna try another another firebolt to go along with that sure so just slowly floating around in the air i'm imagining like a slow a slow circle like a slow spin mm -hmm. especially with the the gentle force of heat off <laughs> Like, like when you're in space, you know, just, yep. you know, when anything impacts you and you just have to start spinning. Um, so, yeah, she'll twist around and hold her hand out and hopefully this time. Oh, yeah. A 19 to hit. 19 most assuredly hits. And, yeah, on that same head that the hammer hit will be six fire damage. Okay. Um, and I will say, you, you notice from your, uh, elevated position, you notice with a hint of sadness, um, that this one looks maybe just a little bigger than the other one, a little, 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 little girthier. Um, 
definitely in the best position to determine that right now. Uh, yeah, the, the, the sizzling, you see that, and you see um, the wounds seem particularly affected by the fire. Um, it seems to have done it a lot more harm as a result. Um, so, yeah. Uh, anything else? I think, I think that is all she can do for this turn. Gotcha. The virus. Looking around, are there any swords on deck? Um. Blade type weapons. Actually, right now, there is a scimitar and dagger at your feet. Because Captain Adard dropped them <laughs> to go and uh, take control of the helm. So Varius is going to reach down, grab the scimitar, and from his vantage point when he saw everything happened to Claire he is going to and how how high up is this second platform um it's about 10 feet 10 feet yep is the creature reachable from the corner or not really uh you'd probably be able to hit it on the noggin yeah that that's uh, on the head in in non english sorry or non non <laughs> non british <clears throat> but there is multiple heads there are currently two heads yes okay so he's going to see that like yeah he's got a lot of target going on he's going to run down and either go down the stairs or jump from the top kind of to a position down low to engage both of the dragon heads or the uh, large green heads purple heads uh, yeah. And... Uh, oh, what? Uh, yep, no, I was just uh, figuring out what... Re yeah. Um, you could... You could probably just get down the stairs relatively safely. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And as he's coming down, the scimitar bursts into a white blade. Using his signature white flame blade. Indeed. I expected nothing less. And that's going to be uh, plus a d4 plus... So it should be a unnatural 20 to... Or 8... Sorry. Unnatural 18 to hit. Oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely hits. Okay. And... So... The scimitar is 1d6? Yes. So the first enemy is going to take two slashing, or I I don't know how this is going to work with the multi-head if it's one creature or not, but um, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you can absolutely treat the second head as a second creature. Okay, uh, so five slashing damage, and um, sorry, the first target is going to get five slashing damage. and the five fire damage, and the second target is just going to receive three fire damage, I believe. Okay. Uh, five, five, and three. What I'm hearing? I'm going to have to input that later, but yes. Look it up. Um, you see just this white flame just erupt all over uh, the the creature's necks and it, it roars in pain um, it is currently you the, the, the heads or the heads and necks look burnt but they're still staying for now and then he's going to say and now that I've got your attention 
he's going to action surge and reach out his other hand and try to shock and grasp. Oh. Uh, mm. Oh, natural 20. Yep, that hits. <clears throat> Although, I, I will note that it's only a 28 to hit. <laughs> There's a, a funny picture earlier. Does a 28 hit? Um, Liz will have to find that. <laughs> uh, and how much uh, damage? Uh, uh, 14 lightning damage. Okay. Um, you grab hold of one of the necks. And just the the lightning courses through and runs up and down the length of the neck until you feel it go limp in your hand. As you look up, you see that actually you're now holding the neck and the head is starting to fall dangerously close to you. It's no longer attached to the creature. And you can see where the neck attached, the amount of of uh burning and like the tissue is just all like cauterized and scarred where the neck used to be mm -hmm. uh and it is it is angry okay and that is my turn Okay. Uh, cassette. What you... was the other uh, weapon that was dropped? Right at the. Um. So there is the scimitar and what? Uh, there's a dagger, but is it is on the top floor, right now. Oh, okay. I just can't... okay. Yeah, you're you're like emerging from underneath the the top floor essentially. Okay. Um, and I didn't, I, I kept looking away. I've been looking for a while, but I guess I didn't write it down. I, I don't remember what my AC was um, with the, the new, because I know I got the, like, cloth padding or whatever. Yeah, you got the padding. I didn't change it on my character sheet, so do you happen to remember? It would probably be the same as Claire's, probably. Um, Did you change yours? Hmm. Sorry, what? Yes. I was looking at my spells. What were you asking? No, the uh, the armor class. I I didn't change mine. Did you change yours? Um. Yeah. It's an el padded armor is an eleven. Plus deck. Plus deck. The twelve. Okay. And then. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yep. That's and good. then does the shield give me maybe one instead of two? Shields give you all shields give you plus two. But no I matter have a what lid of a size. box, maybe. No. Did I get one? I, I'll, I'll give you one for the the lid of a box. <laughs> okay, I think that's reasonable. Improvised shields, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Better than a a giant scaly head with a head. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Um. Okay. So, uh, cause. That will move over to, I guess here um, kind of right next to Smokey and mm -hmm. um, I guess she'll call out to Silverius because um, it looks like she's going to need that weapon um but she'll go ahead and, and at least get in position and, and kind of put her shield up. Um, she'll yell to Silverius, um, I need a little help. Uh, looks like we may have to use uh, our, our plan B a little earlier than we expected. Um, I don't know that I have... Question, um, when you punch somebody, you would say you could divine smite them, right? 
I know. I think in theory, <laughs> only with the you're back not of your supposed hand. to be able to smite because it's not a weapon attack. But that's nonsense to me. You can absolutely smite in my game. To be fair, I, and I this is copy and pasted, but it does say when you hit with a melee attack. I don't think it's his melee weapon attack. Oh, well then absolutely. Punch but and smite. I'm not looking at the rule book. Um, all right, so I'll just try an unarmed. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, use the improvised shield to kind of get some weight behind it and uh, oh, even try better. to hit the. Am I close enough, or do I need to move up one? You would need to go one more. Okay, I'll do that then. Uh, and I'll do an improvised weapon attack. I don't know what that uh, does. I'm just gonna roll a d20 and. Uh, uh, roll d20, add your strength, but not your proficiency. Okay. I don't think. Oh, you're fine. Alright, 14 on the die, so 19? Uh, yeah, 19 hits. What, uh, I will use a spell slot to, um, to cast, uh, Divine Smite. I'll do Divine Smite. Yes, you will. Uh, go ahead <laughs> oh. and roll your smite damage. Okay. I'm not buying time. That's ridiculous. Uh, oh, 10. So 10 radiant damage. That's a lot. Plus the splinter damage from that wicked shield. <laughs> um, uh, roll d4. One splinter oh, damage. Boy. Yeah, well. Um, yeah, you, you uh, bop it right in the snout. Uh, uh, uh. You know that one's nose, right? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. just checking. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't know what <laughs> transfers over. Um, and uh, yeah, you like you you hit it in the nose, and then just that burst of energy, and it recoils, and then both of its heads just go Hunk, and stare at you. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid of that. <clears throat> <laughs> she holds up the now. <laughs> kind of starting to get broken shield like eesh. okay uh that's all i got uh all right it is uh it is their turn um yep that that one is going to look at you and it's gonna snap at you twice yeah shocked oh wait i get an extra attack <laughs> right uh oh yeah yeah you absolutely do can i just swing the i'm just gonna i'm not gonna uh just gonna swing the. Uh, sorry i forgot to play this game uh 12 to hit uh, that does not hit. Okay. Um, you you miss as it it's still sort of recoiling, and you 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 aim where it was and not where it is. Um, and then it tries to bite you. Yeah. Uh, first time is a dirty twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It sneaks past the shield and chomps on the elbow, dealing nine piercing. Second one is. Uh, do I have to make a constitution? Uh, or whatever concentration roll. I don't know how those work. Yes, you're going to have to make two because then it hits on a 19. Uh, chomping on the other arm for another seven piercing. Uh, so yes, two uh, uh, constitution saving throws. Okay. And what do I do? It's just... Uh... Uh, the first one, you get the benefit of the bless, though. No, you don't. You don't have bless. I, I didn't bless myself. Carry on. Uh... Yeah, just go and save. Okay, I'm gonna add my. Um... Uh, yep, and yep. Cool, and I I do get to add my aura protection, right? So I would add. Yeah. Okay, but I didn't need to. So okay. Yeah, you just that that's just permanently on for you now, um, and then after it does that, it actually uh moves fully onto the ship, and like moves around you. Um, just to, you know, get to know you guys a little better. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other side, Severus, uh, you have, uh, garnered the attention of the other, uh, Chonkus over there. Um, mm -hmm. it bites once at you. Uh, that is a 20 to hit again. Man, they're rolling good. Um... Uh, As it's biting, um, Savarius goes, oh. and a shield uh, 
magical shield appears and um, uh, boosts my AC to 21 yeah, to deflect the first strike. And uh, you realize that there is only one strike. Oh. Well, there is only one head. Mm-hmm. Um... And that is their turn. Now, at this point... Eska goes flying backwards. Blair and Kedok go flying backwards. Somehow I managed to move them not properly into the square. There we go. As the ship continues forwards at a relatively sedate pace, all things considered. Um, Smokey, you are up. Uh, the creature standing next to you has two heads and is looking um, like it is, it's breathing is very labored and is struggling here. Okay. Uh, Smokey is going to cast Primal Savagery. He's going to hiss and his claws will sharpen. And he is going to deliver a corrosive attack. Oh God. Um, so, as, because I'm level 5, it would be 2d10 acid damage. Uh, yes. If, I think you still have to roll to hit for that. Uh... In this case, I just roll a 20. Uh, yeah. That would be 20 plus your proficiency and your wisdom. So 15. Yeah, 15 hits. Okay. And then... You do... 2d10 acid? Yeah. I don't know that... You know, I just don't see many druids. That's why I don't know people who take this. I just realized. It says it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's typically it it's cool. it's, it's typically one d10, and then on the bottom of the spell mm. it says this spell's damage increases by one d10 when you reach fifth level. Yeah, so yeah, you oh, you nice. you reach forward and just rake those long claws down into one of the uh, one of the remaining vaguely healthy necks, um, and acid oozes from them, and uh, it roars in pain and teeters, but it is still standing. Um, and then, uh, that's all he's gonna do. Okay. Um. Oh. Oh, yep. If he does that, uh, could I pull out, in preparation for my next turn, could I pull out my scimitar, or oh, yeah. is that an action? No, you okay. can do that. Okay, he's gonna do that. And, and then I'm done. Okay. Uh, Eska. You are about 10 feet from the mast. It's closing. Uh, do I, do, does it feel like if I prepared myself, I could just grasp onto it? Um, I mean, it's, so you could do some sort of quick arithmetic here. And it's going at about um, 30 feet around. So, it might hurt. Let's not say you couldn't grasp it. How, t how but, tall is the mast? Um, that is an excellent question. I'm glad you asked. It's, um, 30 feet. 30 feet, you say? Yep. Always was. Okay, uh, and is there <laughs> is there a crow's nest at the top? No, no. I mean, there, there's nothing as as sophisticated as a crow's nest, um, but there's a sort of a flat space, like it's basically just like a couple of planks either side of the mast. So it's 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 more like a, an enlarged step than a full on crow's nest. But it could be a perch. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to raise myself up 10 feet. Right. Yes, you can do that. And That's what that spell lets you do. So I'll, I'll drift up another 10 feet and... Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about Claire, actually. I think she'll be fine. So... Um, I mean, Claire probably doesn't think so, but I think so. So, yeah, I'll raise myself up another 10 feet. I don't I don't know if that's an action. Let me have a quick check. Uh, do, 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 uh, as part of your move. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'll do it as part of my move. Um, and whilst I'm there, I will... Shoot out. Sorry, got to get my. Oh dear, the screen's different over here. Stop doing that. Uh, okay, I'm event sixty feet. Uh, which one looks rougher? Um, <clears throat> if I had to guess. So, th there's two ways of assessing that. Sure. The overall physical condition and the number of heads. Oh, the one at the bottom's um, just got the one head. But maybe it looks yeah, better. Yeah, so the one on the starboard looks to be in, yes, finer fettle, but only has one head. Um, whereas the one close to you has two heads, but is struggling to stand. Uh, I'll go for the one close to me, and I will just uh, gesture down at it, and... Uh, frost will begin to ripple up my arm and out of my fingers, and I will cast Frostbite at it. Okay. Um, I don't even know if I've done this before. Uh, let's see. I don't remember that happening. You, so it's a Usually save. for range, you just have, you know, um... The bow? The bow, that's the word. Uh, so you have to make a, uh, save... Uh, con save? Uh, no. yes. Con save. 15. There's an 18. Okay. Um, so I will just, yeah, I'll just prepare myself to steady onto the top of the pole. Okay. And, uh, I will say to, uh, Claire, don't worry, I'll get you back in a moment. I'll sort of shout that across the boat to her in case she seems in case she looks worried. <laughs> I imagine she does. Uh, Claire, make an insight check. Just a little freebie here. And um. I mean, you've been traveling with Eska for a little while now. You, you, you feel like she means what she says, but you're not 100% sure that her timeline and your timeline agree on the urgency and stuff. So, you're not as reassured as you could have been. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to cancel the spell. That's also part of the reason you're not very reassured. Um, all right, anything else? For Eska? Uh, no, she's just preparing. If if okay. if you were going to give her something to do in a bonus action, it's preparing. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, over to the crew. Uh, Captain Adard, actually, um, realizing what's going on, does try to... Um, steer the ship slightly to assist uh, and you see uh, Marka has the what we're calling a, a, a bill hook for the purposes of it needed a name um, has it held up uh, Claire you think that you could probably grab that um, 
You could probably grab that now. Uh, and by now, I mean on your turn. Um, but it, it's it's actually pretty close to you now. The the between um, Marka's long arm and the the large stick thing, you you can probably grab it. Um, noted. <laughs> Panically noted. <laughs> Esca raises her up another ten feet. <laughs> Claire screams. No, I don't think I can affect your movement. Um, well, maybe I can, but I didn't. You can. You, you could have as an action. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as an action. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I don't know. Um. Butter. You're up. Okay. More shooting. Yeah. Shooting. Uh, 18 this time. Uh, let me tell you. Thank goodness for bless. Sweet. You hit. Uh, and what? 13 damage. Uh, you do have sneak attack. Aha! Uh -huh. Although technically Sneaky that's 12. Sneaky. I was gonna say, what's, uh, <laughs> where's that extra one coming from? Maybe he already knows oh. the sneak attack roll. Mm. No, uh, it's because I am um, bad at math. Uh, so um, 15. So, uh, you steady your aim, and rather than shooting at either of the heads, you lower your bow towards its heart. And let loose a shot. And it finds its way through the... The... I mean, the, the tissue around, like... Where the neck joins up... To the rest of the body, or the necks... Is... It's weird... Like... It looks like it's just in a constant state of... Damage and regeneration. Um... And as such, it's a weak spot. And... Uh... You are able... To... Drop the beast... Awesome. Um, before you celebrate too much, you do look to your right. And you see that there is still another one that looks in much better shape than the one you just dropped. Hmm, um, I see. You also note that you have lost your tether for Hunter's Bar. Okay. So, as a bonus action, I could transfer it. I mean, you could. And I shall. Right. -o. And uh, I will take my second shot at the other one. I'm just gonna turn you to face it. That works. It feels important. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be accurate. Then the small detail. Yep. All right. Uh, 28 to hit. <clears throat> yeah, that, that hits. And, uh, let's see. 15 damage. I didn't just double check to make sure he added it up, right? That's ridiculous. Who suggested that? Uh, yeah. You, you, you shoot in towards the, the chest area. Um, doesn't look like he got the heart, but it certainly dealt a good blow. And it, it screams as it tries to cling on to the edge of the boat. Sounds good. Is there, I mean, I should have thought of this earlier, but I'm going to go with the fact that, like, I'm on the sea and I'm not really in my element. Is there any place where there is shade in, like in the um, darkness? Not really. I mean, it's not. It's, I mean, there, there's, there's lots of lanterns around on the deck. That's the problem. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of what I was thinking, but I was I figured I should ask. Because it's after, it's you know it's it's turns. fairly dark now, but the fact that everything's lit up by uh, the lanterns on the ship, so that they can see what's happening. Yeah. Stupid people with their needing to see things. Yes. How dare they? How dare they? Um. Yeah. Well, I'll just uh, I'll just hang out here then. Uh, All right. And uh, that'll be that'll be it. 
Alrighty, Kedox is up. Oh, Kedox is going to... Uh, did uh, did Claire reach out for the billhook, or...? She has no, not quite had a chance. Okay. Yeah. Kedox is going to double down and flap his wings extra hard. <laughs> Give me that strength check. With advantage, because you said extra hard. <laughs> Come on, little buddy. We got... Go, Kedox, go! Oh, 16! Oh. <laughs> Edox and Claire move slightly closer Yeah. <laughs> to Marka. And you nearly get impaled on the pole because that was unexpected movement <laughs> that was not anticipated. Oh but you do not get impaled. Uh, it is right next to you, though. Um, and it is your turn. I'd feel so bad if Kedok pushed her into the bill hook. <laughs> oh Let's see. Uh, this is a, a new uh, a, a, a new weapon that I'm creating that probably does 5d12 damage, I guess. <laughs> Given the force of Kedok's pushing, after all. <laughs> no, it would only be 1d12, but he, he tried really hard. They're both so surprised that he... Uh knocks Marker off balance and they both fall off the back of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> where a third creature emerges. Oh, I was gonna say where the dolphins save us. Uh-huh. Where the sure. dolphins eat you. <laughs> <laughs> they were the never dolphins. dolphins. <laughs> they were sharks all along pretending. Oh. Um, yeah, so it is your turn, Claire. Yeah, she's going to first first attempt to grab the bill hook. Given its close proximity, that yes. is that's a free action right now. That's just like grabbing something you were holding yourself. Woo! So she'll grab it and um just kind of steady herself in midair. And um I guess oh. seeing that Eska will release levitate. Interesting. Okay. Briefly, we had a Claire flag. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the time has come for the flag to be taken down. Um, now you, let you me... don't you you. It is a gradual. It's not like a loss of oh, that's true. Complete gravity. So she just she just regains yes, her way. Gentle. Yeah. Okay. I, I I will say that you can guide yourself down uh, to the ground. Um, I'll just briefly sort of detach key docs from you. So yes, you can you can guide yourself down gently. On the uh, on the way down, with her free hand, she she gives key docs a very hurried and quick little head pat. <laughs> and uh, does that do any then... damage, Bill? <laughs> does she pat him out of existence? <laughs> No, based on the description, I don't think it was quite hard enough. Okay. But good looking out. I appreciate that. Just, you know, <laughs> trying to play fair. Any opportunity to take Kedox out, you know I'm going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, back, immediately back to business. Um, she's going to command the, <clears throat> uh, the hammer to hit again. Hmm, yeah. Going away. Good gravy. For a mm. 28 hit? Yep. <clears throat> For 6 damage. And then um, good old 1 2 punch again. Uh, she's going to hold out her hand and try casting another firebolt. Or a 29 to hit. Yep. Or also hits. Or fire damage. <laughs> um, the, the creature screams. I did not care for that. Not one little bit. Well, she didn't care for that 20 something damage either. So. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it is uh, 
the the skin is turning dark. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Silvaris. So, having heard Cosette cry out for the weapon or the, the Plan B, he's going to just say, "Right," <clears throat> and he whips his hand out, his free hand, and as he does. There's a, a quick frost forming, and it zips to the point of his hand, and a, a light flash, and the flail is in his hand. And he's going to try to, if I can, he's going to toss it back to Cossette. Uh, yeah. And uh, if there's no uh, skill check involved with that, he's going to... If that didn't take up my action, also come back around with a scimitar erupting again into a white flame blade. And he's going to try to rake it across the beast. Uh, go ahead and make your attack. Okay. Also, while he's doing that, Cassette could say, "Like, I'm, I'm coming." If he, if she sees it manifest in his hand, um, since they're going kind of right around the same time, if that's easier. Gotcha. Uh, we'll see what happens. This will be entertaining. Okay. <clears throat> uh, holy crap, you're rolling so high, everybody. So, 28 to hit with Bless. <laughs> uh, yes, that hits. And that will do a 9 slashing damage with a... Um, the dice roll was a 4, so 4 fire damage on this creature. Uh, and it's only one target, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, nine slashing for fire. Whew. Um, the one remaining head just gets wreathed in these white flames again, and it sort of tries to shake it off. Uh, it's 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 starting to look a little little worse for wear, a little crispy. And if would Cosette have said that in time? Um, if so, Savaris <clears throat> would hold the flail and try to use it. <laughs> um. I mean, I would say that uh, you are... You, you go at the same time, so I think that's reasonable. Okay. I hadn't actually... I, I, we're all very rusty, apparently, because I completely neglected to, to let you guys sort of go simultaneously here. It just sorted them into the various first, but... Yeah, because he was on deck, it made sense for him to go first. Um, that is true. Time it's mattered, or else I would have mentioned it, but it, it didn't really matter. Cool. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's fine. I, I would say that Cassette could absolutely sort of uh, not have Silverius throw the flail over. <laughs> Accidentally throw it <laughs> <laughs> off the boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, In that event, uh, oh. a natural 20 to hit with the flail. <laughs> nice. Yup. <Bye. laughs> uh, that, um, that hits. I'm mean, secretly a big fan of Cossette's uppercut techniques. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that is... So, double the damage. So, six uh, offhand damage. Okay. Yeah. No, it didn't like that at all. Uh, you... Like, it's, it's just sort of, like, it's head shaking after taking all that fire damage, and then you just <laughs> uppercut. Um, Cassette, I imagine, there's, like, I mean, you're, you're seeing your flail in Silverius's hands. Yeah, uh, proud and jealous. Yep. <laughs> kind of equal parts, yeah. Okay. That's as I expected. <laughs> um, and, yeah, you can, you can act now. Okay. Uh, so she will, uh, come over to this side of the boat. Um, I guess she would have to get right next to it, but can you take up the space as a... You can, spectral yes. ...spectral weapon? Okay, so she'll get right there. So can she grab the flail? Uh, interesting fact. Hmm. Uh, he can't be disarmed. Now... Can't be disarmed. What does that mean? Dis I'm curious 
is that like a... <laughs> <clears throat> now, I voluntarily let go? <laughs> you, you could, but I, I could kind of imagine it as Cassette getting there and just trying to take it. <laughs> and it just not budging out <laughs> of his hand until he consents. So she goes to grab it and pulls, and it it doesn't budge. Doesn't move unless he releases deliberately. She looks at him and pulls again. Doesn't he say looks, anything. Doesn't ask nicely. He looks back at her and he looks down at the weapon, and he just like realizes, oh, let's go. Um. Okay, and she gives like, him kind of like a. It. Like, a, you know what you did, but we'll talk about it later, look. Um, and uh, I get, does that take her action, though? No, 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 that's fine. Okay. All right, so we'll do uh, we'll do an old-fashioned, um, see? Show them how thunder, it's done. Come on. Thunder, totally been stolen now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, she'll just do a, a regular uh, kind of... Uh, uh, horizontal attack. Um, okay, this uses the same stats as, I mean, this is the same thing. It's just a, kind of a summoned version. Same it, stats it, as the flail. It, it is the flail. It's your okay, flail. Gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. It, it's I just being teleported across the uh, multiverse. Gotcha. Um, awful roll. Uh, 12 total, which I don't think hits. It does not. I tried that before. Uh, and then I'll do extra attack. Yep. Jeez. 13. That does not hit. Yeah. Some, somebody should have done an uppercut. She is so mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> you hear from right beside you, not your best today. <clears throat> she just exhales and ends her turn. <laughs> um, having just narrowly twice avoided being hit by a flail, the creature turns and looks at the source of this wafting, jingling mess and bites at Cassette. Damn it. Under the impression that that's where the damage came from in the first place. Normally she'd be right. Um, that is a 16 to hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, oh boy. That is 15 piercing. Ouch. As it it doesn't just get an elbow, it gets a whole shoulder this time. And very large fangs bite deep into the flesh. Um, this creature in front of you is looking battered and smoking and flamey. Uh, and you note, unlike the creature on the port side, this one has not had any ability to regenerate uh, its damaged body. Smokey, it's over to you. Would like to use my... Is it feline? Agility. Oh boy. Uh, so I can move double my regular movement. Yeah, you can get anywhere on the boat right now. So I'm going to come up to this creature... Can I get into melee range with it, or is there too much going on? Yeah, you can get corner to corner here next to Cassette. Um, you could even, with the amount of movement you've got, you could get up onto the top deck and try and slash down on it, because it's quite a big creature. And so you could probably reach from reaching down if you want to. Your choice. Okay. Are you... So kind of like more to the, the side of it here? Yep. Yeah, you can get up there and then like reach right down and next to cause is that cassette uh silverius is the one is directly silverius? Next to you. all yeah. right so get next to silverius and try to take a whack at it with my scimitar uh I'll, yeah alas you uh you you kind of hit the the wood next to it and it just chips a little bit off and splinters away into the water Oh. 
Hey, you know what I just realized? Ah, uh, no, it's fine. There we go. Um, okay. Uh, Eska. Uh, uh, ooh, I, 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 um, here, make a, I just realized I didn't move you with the, uh, well, I can't, I can't actually grab you at the moment, there we go. Make a, um, uh, dexterity check. Dexterity check, you say. Uh, I can make it a saving throw, that's fine. Oh, okay. I'll allow it. Oh, I think it's the same anyway. Okay. Uh, 21. Oh, goodness me. You you are able to grab hold um, without taking damage. You are fully prepared. And you are now standing at not so much the crow's nest as much as the crow's little hangout spot. Nice. I sort of uh, perch down there with just uh, crouched with one hand on there with, as well. Um, my other hand free. Which I then point at the creature... And once again, ice begins to kind of project down it, and uh, it forms up into a ball in my hand, and then projects out and is flung at it. And I will cast a chromatic orb at Ooh. third level. Oh. <laughs> um, uh <-huh. clears throat> so that's going to be well, that's uh, spicy. That go? Why did that not go? Did that? Oh, it did go. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I have to Orange, make a range uh, spell attack. You choose cold, obviously. Yeah. And then I know I shouldn't, but attack. I'm going to. <laughs> um. All right. Oh, I have it here. Let's see if I can do it like that. Oh no. <laughs> a natural one. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> You, you aim, and unfortunately, just as you're about to release, oh, uh, oh. Captain Adard. Never mind. Is. I was going to use something, but it doesn't work. Uh, sorry. Start again. <clears throat> uh, just as you're about to release, um, Captain Adard finishes making his minor adjustment to try and help get Claire reeled back in, and the boat shifts again. And instead of hitting uh, the creature, you hear a little whoosh as your uh, giant ball of hail uh, disappears into the water. Just kind of shakes the uh, a little flex of ice off. Uh, that <clears throat> she's going to stay up here. It's nice here. Okay. Um. Marka is going to come over here and take a swing with the bill hook. 5d12 damage, don't forget. That the critter. Was that imaginary damage? Yeah, a little bit. Um. Ooh. A palpable hit. How do I do the, the, the damage part? Okay. <clears throat> um, so yeah, uh, he is able to just basically swing it around like a giant club. Um, and uh, it doesn't doesn't look like it does a lot of damage in fairness, but he does he does help. Um, you, you, you see it like wax into the back of the, the creature. Um, and it sort of uh, I mean, it's, it, it, there's, there's a, there's a new wound on the back, uh, and then Marker tries to run away, and then immediately gets chomped at. Oh, da 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 dear. Uh, that's a 21 to hit on Marker. A lot of piercing damage. Please hold. Yep, that's what I thought. <clears throat> um, so yeah, Marka, um, having not really seen this creature up close until just now, 
tries to run away. The, the one remaining head reaches up, snaps back um, as Marka moves. Because, I mean, you know, Marka was hacking from like 10 feet away. Um, figured he was safe. Um, alas. Marka drops as this creature reaches up and just grabs him in the back and tries to pull him back down. Uh, it actually does drag him five feet, but then gets stuck. Uh, Marka is uh, on the ground, bleeding profusely. Uh, Captain, for a second, thinks about moving away, but stays firmly in place, holding the wheel. Bador. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take some shots at it. As per usual. Uh, was that f uh, 15 to hit? 15 hits. Somehow, with okay. a 2 on your d20, you have hit. Yes. I'm aggrieved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that would be 8 points of damage. Would that also be a, I didn't add a sneak attack with a sneak attack oh yes definitely sneak okay. attack you got three allies but you can only add it once can you imagine if it was I like cumulative like that Holy crap. that'd be crazy an additional five so total 13 okay uh it's 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 teetering and struggling to hold on to the uh the boat why won't you die <laughs> Shoot it again. Uh, it's a 21 to hit. It definitely hits. With uh, 13 points of damage on that one, too. Um, you see the one remaining head weaving. Um, covered in blood. Probably a fair amount of markers at this point, but I don't know how well you would have seen all that take place because of the angles. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it opens its mouth once more to roar in defiance, and you just shoot right into the middle of the mouth. And the arrow you see uh, poking out the back of the head. And the creature collapses onto the railing and then slides into the water and away. Just take a deep breath and lower my bow. Uh, he don't do anything. Yes, is all is all quiet. Uh, key docks. Relatively if there quiet. are no targets. Oh. Fly up and scan the area. Uh, here, I'll just pop him in the middle somewhere. Uh, go ahead, give me, um, a perception check. Alright, uh, key doctor perception. Uh, nine. Um, key docs does not see a lot. What he does see is that the Dolphins seem to have disappeared. Hmm. Um, Claire immediately runs up to, um, oh my god, I can't see his name. Marka and Cass, um, spare the dying on him. Okay. Uh, the market is stabilized. Albeit a zero hit points. Yeah, but no death. So, because I would run over at the same time. If are we able to? Uh, you may do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'll lay on hands for five hit points. I guess. Okay. Um. You see, as you do that. Um, the warmth sort of radiating out of your uh, arm 
see the wound uh, heal on Marka's back. And the uh, his eyes open and he looks around wildly for a second looking for danger before calming again. Did we get it? Claire just <laughs> Claire lets out a huge breath and nod and um reaches over and grips cassette forearm and is um also gonna cast um cure wounds on her. Uh, es Eska's just scanning from her position. Just to make sure that there's no more noise. For ten. Um, Eska, make... Clear. Eska, make a perception check, please. Uh, that is gonna be 23. <coughs> that says persuasion, but I'll take it. Oops. <coughs> Every time. <laughs> um... As you look out, it's it's tricky because obviously there's light underneath you that's making it hard to see out. Um, so it's kind of messing with your eyesight a little. Um, but what you realize is that it's not just that it's there's so much light underneath you; it's that there's so much darkness above you. Um, as you look around. It's very clear that in as you've been dealing with these creatures, the ship has just been steadily heading toward heading. <laughs> the ship has been steadily heading towards the storm, and uh, it's about to hit. And that's where we'll leave it tonight. Dun dun dun. <laughs> foreshadowing <laughs> yeah I, I was but, like oh when Hydra's given us a nice sort of softball to start with two Hydras that's a very hydrating encounter uh -huh. sorry no that was bad mm -hmm. delete that <laughs> you know what? oh man they definitely did not like fire I can confirm that I was proud of everybody but not uh, unnaturally firing anything. The, yeah, the only it, I fire mean, things that happened were stuff that you guys always use. Like go to's, mm -hmm. Claire's yep. Firebolt, White Flame Blade. Yeah. It's really, it's just a shame in a way that you only used it on one. Yeah. That That's possibly the only argument, but the yeah. other one. Just needed freaking. <laughs> it, it, it got uh, bardoured. Yeah, we yeah. bardour. <laughs> yeah, vulnerable to bardour, uh, which is like every enemy, <laughs> and sometimes friends. <laughs> uh, at times, yes. <laughs> but yeah, so next time we'll pick up with half of you battered and bloody, and the other half of you just. Hunky dory. Um, a big monster corpse on your boat and a storm about to hit. More stuff to give to Cater. <laughs> All right. We need to turn back around. <laughs> uh, it's like, can uh, you take that back for us? Please? We're going to need a bigger cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that thing looks ginormous. And so, with one threat resolved, another quickly rises to take its place. Join us next time for more fables from the Pickle Equip. Goodbye.